everyone and welcome to Holly's Business Pharmacy. Today we're going to be talking about the most one of the most important things that we could talk about, how to scale your business. That's right. And today this has been brought to you as ever by the wonderful Dell Technologies, a partner who I love working with because it's so genuine and when we get well, we're planning lots of things for next year and I'm very, very excited. So today's Holly's Business Pharmacy is all about scaling your business. And we've got two fantastic guests for you today, small businesses themselves, because it's nothing better than actually hearing people on the job doing it rather than maybe people who, you know, write books. Well, I know, but no. No, Holly, I've written a book and uh, definitely I did it. But you know what I mean? We need the grit. We need to get into exactly what it means to scale your business. Um, and I am excited to introduce you to these two guests. But before I do, as ever, can I ask everybody to invite someone else onto this live who you believe would love to scale their business? Because scaling is actually quite difficult. Um, it's, yeah, th 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 there's a lot of things that go into scaling. So could I ask everybody to tag in a small business friend, a founder who you love, someone you've met on Instagram, who you've never met before, but actually you know that they would really, really enjoy this. So let's talk about scaling. Um, it's something that uh, I definitely know a little bit about. Um, I think that in these sort of times, I bet you there's a lot of people going, right, this is all about bunkering down. It's not about scaling. Um, I can't be ambitious. Ambition right now is not really what you should do. Um, and I just want to say that's codswallop. We are going to scale our companies. These are our business dreams. This isn't a hobby. This is what's going to be paying our wages, paying for a family holiday, paying the electricity bills. It's very important that we do not take that external feeling that we have at the moment and allow it to dampen any of our ambition. Um, and so staying safe, I think there is a place for it and that will come into your cash, et cetera, et cetera. But in terms of ambition and scaling, absolutely now is the time. Um, and remember, when there is uncertainty, there is opportunity. There always is. Remember, people are cutting back, but a lot of people are still spending. There is always those double sort of sides to every situation. Um, I built Not High Street 16, I think 17 years ago now. It was a very, very rough condition. We were in a recession at the time. Um, and now, you know, Holly & Co will be experiencing it probably again. It has not dampened my ambition I even slightly. Um, if anything, it, it feels like the world needs more colour. It needs more small businesses. It needs more ideas out there. So please do remember, there is no right way to scale your company. Um, but certainly we've got some um, good advice that's going to come to you. What does scaling mean? You know, I always like to cut out the BS out of these things. No acronyms, no business speak here. Thank you very much. This is a group of people who are going to be honest and transparent and keep your comments coming in. If you've got any question, there is no silly question when it comes to Holly's Business Pharmacy. So scaling your business basically means growing it and ultimately taking it to the next level. And you can completely continuously be in scaling mode. Or you could um, scale, then basically bed in, plateau, scale and bed in. Like there's different ways that you could look at it. Ultimately, scaling is about making more money. It's about growing or reaching a wider audience and building and expanding your brand and basically being nearer your final destination. And when I say final destination, I am actually saying that that's mythical. Unless you are planning on selling your company, a final destination for me is basically the anchor that is within the ultimate thoughts of where your company could go to. So for me, the destination is actually um, more a visualization. Um, and that is that is my... So my destination for Holly & Co is... Um, very exciting, but um, 
is ultimately in the clouds. And that is my final destination. It's how can I grow this brand into the biggest, widest version of the dream that I have for Holly & Co. For other people, it might be to sell the business in five years time, 10 years time. For other people, it might be that it needs to uh, afford you to move out of where you live and move to the country, let's just say. There can be lots of different destinations, but ultimately scaling is the points that you're going to get to it. Um, my advice also is that you've got to be looking into the future because, and I like this term, think about this, return is never instant. And this goes back to me when I talk about um, there's no silver bullet in business. I mean, so many of us search for the silver bullet. If I just employ that agency, I know it's going to be all about Google. Next moment. Oh, no, it's not. I hate TikTok. No, I'm going to be on TikTok. The next moment is or I'm going to have a physical store. No, I'm not going to have it. Ultimately, the whole point is, is that whatever you're building, whatever you're scaling, it is not instant. But every single one of your decisions count because they add up. Cumulatively, they add up. Uh, a few comments here. Lots of people say good morning. Hello. Good afternoon. Um, Millie Phoenix home. Crikey, Holly. This is absolutely what I need to hear. Keys to bigger shop tomorrow. I am all in for this, regardless of climate. Chance of a lifetime. So going for it. Absolutely, this is the attitude, everybody. Do not let the grey seep in. That is not what we're designed for. Peking Duck Jewelry, people are sending in more thoughtful ways, which as a smaller business, we fully appreciate. Um, every purchase is far more considered, which means far more valued and appreciated. I love that thought. So let's think about scaling. Um, basically, ultimately, there is risk in scaling, but actually it will always be responsible risk. I, th I don't believe in this whole entrepreneurial crazy, you know, oh, you're just such an entrepreneur, you haven't really thought of things and you're just going for your dream and is your dream really a reality and have you really thought about it? The point is, yes, that probably we thought about it way too much. Entrepreneurs are normally very risk adverse, but they will take risks because they calculate their risks. I am risk averse. I will not jeopardize anything that I'm building on a whim. That is an absolute, you know, a Wolf on Wall Street type sort of stuff. But actually, what we do do as entrepreneurs, we calculate our risk. And then when we're ready, we are strong enough to take risk. And by the way, scaling your business is basically um, not for the faint of heart. Like, don't think that this is an easy ride. Scaling your business is pretty full on. Some of the reasons why people don't scale, uh, poor use of technology. Um, people have imposter syndrome when it comes to technology. Not only, uh, you know, your hardware and what you're using, but also from, um, can I, is my website robust enough? Is it actually match fit for today's era? Have I thought about video? Have I thought about my future communication with my uh, customers? Probably not. Supply chain, uh, pro supply chain problems. You know, what processes could you be changing, more efficiently changing? Have you got issues with Brexit? Security and cybercrime. This is on the up. This is always something that we can, um, can absolutely damage our sort of want and uh, bravery to go for it. Uh, labor shortages in terms of actually getting people on board. Remember what we said, um, websites are a thing of the past, wink. I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. I think that actually, I think that websites have absolutely their place because no one, no customer is in an exactly same position. So it's all about, and I've always said this, haven't I? Have you worked out who your customer is? Yes, yes, Holly, I have sales. That's not the same thing. Have you worked through who your customer is? Um, have you actually gone into the detail? Um, has it changed from three years ago? Would you even know if your customer had changed from three years ago? Um, also, I just do want to say that actually there is also a holistic viewpoint on scaling, which is that you need to be 
uh, ready for it, right? Your family needs to be ready for it. Your other halves need to be ready for it. You need to be ready for it because actually it takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of commitment. And I always always like say, you know, you can look around for what everyone else is doing and then shove those blinkers on. And I want you to be like a racehorse because actually that's what it requires. And scaling, by the way, you might all try and scale, but there will be some who succeed in scaling and that is going to be due to what you put in, the energy that you put in. So my advice is definitely to have a chat around you and with those who love you from anything from help with the school run to understanding quality time, not quanti uh, quantity of time, not quality quality of time not quantity of time potentially with your little ones understanding the emotional labor and the invisible labor that's going to go into all of this have you thought about who is going to support you and I mean it by the way I really mean it like scaling a business is like um having a child for the first year it is properly full-on but it is the thing absolutely the thing that is addictive about running your own business. How to get to the next level. It's like a video game, isn't it? Do you call it even video games now? But anyway, it's like you want to hit the next level and that takes, as Harry would say in his earlier years, a lot of dedication, Bubba, to spend time on that video game. Uh, creatorship, scaling can be the survival of your business. Staying stagnant can be the demise of your business. That's great, great um, thoughts there. Uh, Claire um, Bow Wax Company um, found myself questioning my worth with all the talk of current climate. Today, I'm ready to know my worth and I'm ready. I'm really, really pleased. Sparkles Eco Shop. I've been working on my Google business profile. We spoke about that before much more lately. Fingers crossed it helps. I, I Well, it's not not going to help, is it? That's the thing. There's a lot of things that we do where you're not going to see the results instantly. That's what I just said. It's all about the cumulative. Uh, wouldn't you love? Map out your customer journey. How do they find you? How will they purchase from you? Absolutely great points. Now, we're going to go over um, to, well, today's session is all about scaling, knowing the right time to scale, top tips for do's and don'ts. Um, I'm going to be joined by two amazing guests. My first guest is Simon Salter, co-founder of Dirt Tea. Um, I came across Dirt Tea. I was going for a little uh, retail therapy in Selfridges and I didn't actually buy anything that day, but I just go there to experience retail therapy. Um, uh, retail theatre and uh, it makes me so happy and then there was these two wonderful gentlemen and we got chatting and um, and then I saw them at Fern's Happy Place and I am literally an addict of uh, yes mushroom tea but I'm not going to talk about it too much because I tend to go off on one about it I'm a self-imposed mushroom influencer now, that is a title I can be proud of. Um, I'm also going to be speaking to a wonderful woman. I'm going to um, save her for a moment, um, where we're going to uh, delve into scaling her business. Um, and she is actually from a company called Bee Vive. Um, and it's all about saving bees. And I and her name's Faye. And I absolutely love this. So two founders I can't wait to speak to. So we're going to head over to Simon now, who joins us from Dirt Tea. And um, I'm going to have to try and contain my excitement. Um, because if you're in my personal life right now, it's all I'm talking about. Um, but today we're going to talk to him about scaling business and how they've scaled, because I hear that they are scaling ridiculously. Hello, you. Yeah. Hey, Don, I was, I'm looking for a notebook because I didn't realise that this was an education for me. So but I can't <laughs> even find a pen. So I just hope this is recorded. That was amazing. It, that was amazing. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Now, listen, introduce yourself. So I'm one of the co-founders. My name is Simon Salter. Um, my brother, who is in California at the moment, uh, and I can talk about that in a bit. Um, we both co-founded Dirty just over a year ago. Um, but interestingly enough, what you said, like, kind of was like a curveball because I realized that, you know, we actually 
we built our company over COVID in the epicenter of, uh, of the pandemic. It was one of the greatest challenges, not just for us, but for on a, on a global scale to, to do something different because we were forced into doing something different. And most of that was being locked in the four walls and losing the creative expression to be. Um, but um, I want, I know you've got a couple of questions, but one thing I just wanted to say that whatever the external um, forces that may be that we can't uh, influence uh, shouldn't, shouldn't um, affect something that you believe in if you think it's something that's going to positively affect others which is certainly why we started dirty um then i would say um go forth and there's some someone actually said something to me the other day and it made so much sense he said do easy things for a hard life and do hard things for an easy life and i've kind of uh <laughs> it's a simple thing but i've, I've used that mantra with yeah i've never heard that what a wonderful thing to say and i think that you know, we, we, we're we going to get into scaling, but I think sure. one of the things that I love about what you're doing and what I speak about continuously is having a purpose and a passion outside of what you're actually creating and selling and making a living from. And sure. that's what I have, that's what comes across for me from what you do. So as I am a mushroom influencer, um, I'll just- Number one, number one. Oh, number number one, one, I'll just take take over from here. But Please. just to say to everybody, you know, th this is the point, there's dirty, you could just talk about the fact that it's a, a tea and it's gonna make you feel better, et cetera, et cetera. And we're all sure. busy, et cetera, et cetera. But the point is, is that I then hear you speak. I think about what you're saying. I then go and find myself watching Netflix. Um, the Fantastic fun, fun Guy. Thank you. Fantastic Fun Guy. And I start going on my own little journey. And then I come right back sure. to you because I then credit Dirty for opening my eyes into something that I hope will stay with me for life. This is then something that for small businesses listening, does your company do what I've just said Dirty has done for me? And if it doesn't, then this is where you could look for a silver bullet, which is your brand is not deep enough. It's not mm. doing something that is beyond what I'm just buying maybe for Halloween or for Christmas. <laughs> Tell me mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. do you believe that? Because I think that everything you're, why you're scaling potentially is because I'm telling your story over and over again to anyone, yeah. basically my neighbors, like I'll just knock on their door and tell them about you. But you know, I feel like I'm passing on amazing knowledge and you yeah. gave me that key. Yeah, yeah, so I would say this. Um, in theory, this is a mistake us building a business. When we started, if I can just say, I know, I know our time is limited and forgive me and, and please tell Emma, I, am, I do apologize. But the most important thing to take into consideration is the fact that we, my brother and I uh, started this because we went through burnout when we were building our other company. We lost the ability of understanding about this and this. And the reality became that we started getting these different chronic symptoms from burnout, which is sleep deprivation. And that kind of amplifies other kind of chronic symptoms. And in a time or a generation where we're limited on the bandwidth of knowledge about what can fix us. And you use the term silver bullet. Uh, everyone wants a silver bullet so they can just be fixed and get on. The thing with uh, mushrooms is because we're so connected, as you will know from, well, first of all, being our mushroom influencer but more so watching fantastic fungi we share more in common with uh, fungi than we do with plants so on a dna sequencing level around 54 percent of our dna is matched and i say that because everything within the fruiting body of a mushroom is there to protect the mushroom and, and dispel of all the pathogens and bacteria and it's it's those within the fruit the fruiting body that we use symbiotically when we drink that tea so what actually does happen is that people become um like you, it's like wearing a billboard on your chest. You go out and, and share with the world. You become, it becomes a disciple effect. So when we were building this, we were building on the basis of sharing the knowledge that we were building because it took us to go to burnout to realize that we were, we were becoming more of a CEO of a company than we were becoming the CEO of our own body. And mm -hmm. as a result of which, um, you know, we started creating our own ceremonies. People would come over to our house and we would um, give them the, the dirty experience, if you will. 
And they were stress creatures. They were chefs. They were on assembly line. They were entrepreneurs in some capacity. But one thing that, that we were all kind of agreed upon is that we feel shit in some capacity. I do apologize yeah. this before a certain time. Um, but we didn't feel right. We wanted to feel good. These mushrooms are adaptogens. They just adapt to the body's stresses. They allow your immune system to feel um, aligned, never overstimulating, never underregulating, allowing you to almost feel you're wearing an S on your chest. Now, the human experience is undeniable. Um, we built the company because it really reflected our mission. Our mission was to bring mushrooms to the mass. Like how many more um, doors could we open and share with people the knowledge of these mushrooms? And the moment you kind of hand this knowledge in the most simplified way and the tea, it becomes part of their lifestyle. Yeah. And that for me is undeniable. And I think that's a new age of business. I think if you can build something that's going to positively affect others, uh, a business will grow and it will grow if it's true to the heart of what it started with. And it's beautifully put, and it's true to the heart of the founders. You know, the founders are the Duracell batteries of every company. They are, you take the founder out of a company, you do not have, well, you have a company, you have the shell, but you do not have the heart, soul, and mind of a company. You don't, know, you don't have the vision. And I know that from firsthand yeah. experience. So we need to understand that, that that's actually what people are buying into. That's when I buy into Dirty, I'm buying into you and your brother who have opened the door for me and educated me. And this is what the opportunity is for everybody. But let's get into just some specifics sure. about scaling. You right now, I know, um, <laughs> are scaling fast. Um, and having your own issues in terms of scaling and things. Tell me about what it takes as a mindset. So let's put aside your mushroom mission, but sure. more like the nuts and bolts, right? Mm -hmm. So now you've got a company, you need mm -hmm. cash, you've mm -hmm. got to build technology, you've got to do all of these things. What's the experience of scaling been like for you? Well, it's interesting because we're stepping into uncharted territory. It's not our area. Uh, and you say to take away the vision, but the vision is always Im 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 imprinted in our DNA of what we're doing. It's always challenging us every day if what we're doing is right. Because if you um, pull back the velvet cloth, so to speak, you can see the real operations of the business. And that would be, you know, building a, a supply chain, you know, building the product, you know, building a sustainable product, um, you know, knowing the, where the source of the product comes from. There's a whole story and there's a there's challenges on every story because you know yeah. there's no fairy tale in building a business um and i think you know platforms like this will really allow people to know that even at times when they think they're succeeding they're, they're failing in some capacity they're really not i believe you're failing forward it's just the idea that you have to step into the territory of something you don't quite understand and pick a book up find some mentors and you will absolutely understand uh, how to build that business. And that's why I think the vision should stay quite close to what you're building. Um, and, you know, you've, you've met some of our, our team. You've met part of our founding team, uh, Jessica Salmonpour, who's also our COO, but, you know, she's recently become, like, ch in charge of looking after our supply chain. Um, and if I can say, as a challenge, I would say this, and she's done really unbelievable with that, and I would say this, is that we had a surge of sales about uh, a month and a half ago. And maybe a positive curveball, but it didn't, it never seemed like it because on the basis that we couldn't keep up with the demand of the sales. And as a result of which, um, the success and failure was people weren't getting the product when they anticipated that. And then a generation which Amazon has created that the moment you click buy, yeah. it's on your lap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that kind of had a challenge on our supply chain and certainly on the communication side. And my brother and I pride ourselves on communications. It's something that we, we passionately believe in, but there was such a flurry, such a reservoir of people like say, where's my products and so forth. Um, so that is- But been then, a great... but can I interrupt? But then what yeah. you did is exactly what we talk about here. You sent out an email and I read the email because I'm your number one fan, but also <laughs> because it was written from you guys. I could tell it was written from you. It was about basically that the dirt tea that I had ordered was going to be delayed. And it was the last thing that you wanted, but that you were found sure. as scaling a business. And I read that as a customer and I was completely, I completely fine with it because I believed in what you were doing. And absolutely, as you said, it was actually get a grip, you know, this isn't Amazon. This is the whole point, it's not Amazon. Mm. So I think it's also about, isn't it, taking your customers along for the journey because the route to scale is not a straight one in any no. sense of the way. And I love that, failing forward. So you're, mm. you're just in new territories. But I think that the way that we can feel is that everything needs to be pitch perfect the whole way along. We need to yeah. even give that illusion to our customers. We're missing a brand trick. 
which is actually take the customers mm. on the low points because actually that's where I emotionally connect with you. Yes, yeah. I, and that's with, I would say like you and like many others, uh, when they responded, it was, it was, it was a, they were always very heartfelt uh, response because they, response, sorry, because they knew we were a new company and we we're building. They knew we just went through some challenges. Uh, so I appreciate what you're saying because it does mean a lot because in a business, you, you never want to upset the customer in any capacity at all. And, and I'd also say this, as much as Dirty is a business, it is a community that we're building. I really feel it's the heartbeat of what we're building. So something like this really reaffirms uh, the community we're building. And, you know, when, you know, looking on social media, there was, you know, there were the, the, um, the trolls tend to come up. Um, and go a bit crazy but you know they're there but that's very ephemeral and and, and then you it, all, you, all we do is we go back to them and we uh, uh, we apologize and they're like I'm so sorry let me please take that comment down um, so I think um, the communication is key whatever the circumstances even if it's I what I have learned is this is that uh, even in the grace of challenging moments where it didn't go your way um, don't try and fool the customer in any capacity at all you know we were very upfront with them and uh, they're, they're part of us and they want to buy yeah, more. So. And, th and they're going to be with you long term. Let me read out some comments. And then I want to ask you um, about what has been your your best, what tips would you give out there for scaling? And what are some of the things that have gone wrong for you? So I'm just going to mm -hmm. read out some comments. So Natural Discovery UK, gosh, I love Dirty, awaiting a whopper of an order from them. <laughs> well done. Noir, Kringle, Black, San, uh, Santa UK, this is great. Uh, Jay Byron 98, bought my first pot of dirt tea for me and my mum. Loving it so far, thank you. Loops of colour, love Simon's mushroom necklace. Oh, look, it is a mushroom <laughs> necklace. This is I actually a gift. This is a gift from um, Akesh, who's the founder of Fable and Main. I think you might know him. Yes. Um, he came on as a, one of our investors, and this was a present. So I wear it with great pride, and I'm very thankful. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm. I, you're so in my heart. I've also bought you three a little present the other day. Oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm finding little things, and I'm just putting them in my mushroom pile. That's. I, I promise you it's not going to get weird, okay? I promise no, you. No, no, no. I'm fine. Um, Sparkles, uh, what have I got here? Um, uh, Sparkles Eco Shop. Thanks, Simon. This is such sound advice. Very crafty. Well, this is going to be incredibly useful for me as I have a tea business. Um, it, it, Imo uh, Il Ilan, uh, Allenson. I love dirt tea. Best mushroom product around. 23, uh, Antonelle. I got the email from dirt tea, but it didn't matter about the weight at all as I wanted to try the product. So confident, surely. Going to have a check out of this tea. Sounds fab. RG Retail. Very happy to wait for dirt tea when it offers... Um, when it offers the benefits that it does. So just tell me, in terms of scaling, what would you say so far have been your top three things that you would say about scaling? Well, D to C, our e-commerce has been, has been phenomenal. I, I would say probably 90% of our revenue comes from, um, from that approach. Uh, but it's a very tricky one. Um, D to C, we have... don't do, we, do, do, explain that for everybody. Just in case. And that's, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what? I would have said that, you know, some time ago. So that's dis uh, digital to customer. So it's more digital of a Digital to customer. A so way. website or your social media to customer. And, and I'd say this also, Holly, one of your, um, your part of your community were talking about websites of the past or something I caught the wind of. I, I think yeah. it's in absolutely incredibly important to have a hub where people can come to to see and, and, and to buy, um, I would say our conversion rate is so big on the, on the website because everything is there. Uh, and in most cases, people just want to buy, but they want to go through a journey and understand the authenticity of what they're buying because trust is a very important part. So the website is, 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 where, is, is almost the heartbeat where you live. Um, these other kind of platforms, uh, TikTok, Instagram, are great for like content to put something entertaining and communicating, and communicating the message out there. But the website is really yeah. is where you live. I, I, I really agree. In that. I agree. So number one, D to C. So digital straight through to consumer websites are alive. Yes. You've got great conversion rates. So everyone, uh, your website is absolutely your life raft. So you need to make sure there's air in it. Next point, would you say, mm. Simon? Uh, in the physical capacity where you met us when we were in in retail, um, we always went in with conditions. Now, um, I would say that um, Selfridges were lovers of Dirty. They saw my brother and I give a keynote at the summit, which is called Voices, which is uh, by the business of fashion. And one of the international buyers was there, was fascinated by this, as I think there's a renaissance, not just around mushrooms, but 
integrated medicine and health in a well-being capacity. So um, our conditions when we went to um, Selfridges, as much as when we're as we're in uh, Dalesford and Planet Organic, is we don't just go into and sit on a shelf and accumulate dust. We have a whole educational program. We create, we create a physical space where we can engage with the customers. I think it's a slow approach to, um, to scaling, but it's an important one because people are not just buying the tea, they're buying an experience. Yeah. Um, so scaling in retail, if you can find an opportunity to work closely uh, with the uh, with the general managers there, with the marketing there, they'll invest into the marketing as much as you may do because they, if, if they're putting out there, they believe in it. And shelf yeah. space is always important. So challenging eye level is always a very important part, never to be too uh, low down always an eye level. Yeah, and I love that. And, you know, this is the thing. We always talk about, Simon Sinek, you know, better to have a true, uh, for a loyal fan base of a thousand people than many passers by. And actually that allows small businesses to really understand, you know, you, how much you could do with just a thousand people continuously coming back to you. And yeah. actually your point there is you make those emotional bonds those yeah. are your thousand people, right? And yes. so actually that can be slow burn, but if they're going to come back for 10 years as a loyal customer, mm -hmm. you know, many, many retailers would give their both arms for that experience because all they have is they have to accumulate more and more new customers because the old customers never come back. So that's a great yes. second point. And what would be your third? Um, How's I, it been I for think... you and your brother? mentally like doing this oh it's 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 been it i would say it's 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 one of the greatest gifts i've been given in this lifetime I, i'm sorry to say in a very mawkish kind of way but you know um we live in a time where we walk you can walk in you know we connect with more people in one day than our ancestors would have connected in a lifetime yet we walk into a room and we feel like we're strangers when you're building something so we've, it's a, there's a very very lonely part of the generation when you're building some someone who you have unconditional love with that you can share vulnerability with and know you're not being yeah. judged it's one of the rarities that you can have when you're building a business we don't really have any arguments and if they are it's all because it's in spirit of the shared pursuit that we have and i can tell you that this scientifically you can't be angry more than 10 minutes anything beyond the 10 minutes is nothing more than optional so um I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, Frank, yeah. my husband will be watching this saying that he disputes yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'd, I, I'd, I'd say this as well. Well, yes, well, we can talk about it offline. I can support that one. So I'd say this also to you is that um, because of building that relationship my brother and I have, um, it's allowed us to build an amazing team and a, a community, which is because we're speaking about hiring. Um, one thing that we've done is, and I'd say there's about two or three people working with us now who were a dirty customer and they loved it so yeah. much they wanted to work with us and i'll tell you this and this is this is if you don't mind me saying to your platform my brother and i alongside jessica we are now hiring we've moved into bigger offices a bigger warehouse and we basically want people to join our movement uh, this is beyond a business we have people who have joined who are marketing but this is the great thing about uh, startups they may be their, their wheelhouse may be marketing but they're dealing with customer service. They're dealing with product. Yeah. It's getting the full spectrum of the whole working of the business because I know what happens and I'm living it now is the moment that, you know, some of our team may leave for whatever reason, they can build up their own business. They've seen more than the naked eye would see in a conventional dinosaur business. So to your, to your community, I would, I would love to, start bringing more people on, on board and yeah, I know that you wow. have a lovely lovely community what an opportunity and and also you know the in the early days of not in the high street all uh, all our team was either family or their friends and and relatives or it was customers always it was customers and actually it was a fantastic thing because you've already got people really believing in your company that then join i'm just going to read out a few more comments before i'm going to go on to our next guest popsy clunk i love that the website is the heart of where you live i'm definitely prioritizing mine uh cha cha hayes product is so well marketed because we buy into you as people love this love this can't wait to see where your brand goes um mimosa beauty salon lifetime value is worth so much absolutely everybody just know that every single huge dinosaur retailer 
all they're doing is looking at lifetime value of a customer and all they do is recruit new customers okay so we have to be smarter and a fine jewelry uk that moment about repeat customers is so important i think i forget this sometimes but i do have so many who return if you do have people that return make sure you treat them in a special way everyone yes. likes to feel like they're special and so yes. please, please take the time. Simon, I could talk to you all day. I want to talk again because I'm having the most profound experience on Dirt Tea. I have, <laughs> um, I've had PMS for so long. I'm on day 25 um, of Lion's Mane. And I would say that my symptoms for the first time in my life are down by 80%. So 80%, that's incredible. That's it's so just ama literally amazing. And I, I watched all your reels and that's where I saw that mm. you talking about the ladies mm. in China and you said yep. that, yeah, the, and they had the placebo and the group that didn't. And, the and that's when I said, okay, let me just try this out. And so I've committed to it. And honestly, it has hormonally changed me. So I've actually just gone for my hormone checkout yesterday and I'm actually going to see potentially literally in my bloods if it's changed me. But that's fascinating. You. Going Thank you for sharing that. that. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Well, hey, I'm not your number one mushroom influencer. Indeed, I don't know why I said that. You're why did you right. say that? I have hey. no idea. You can't edit that one out. <laughs> right, I've got to go. Okay. Otherwise, this whole thing is going to be on mushrooms. Well, okay. Lots All of right. love to you and the team. Take Thank care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Bye for now. Bye bye. Bye. Right. Amazing. Gosh, what amazing tips that we've just received there about scaling. Now we're going to head over to another fantastic founder who also has got a, well, a business that's more than, uh, uh, it's a business that's about the bees and it's not just about her. And this, I love her to tell me the story of how this all happened. Faye's going to join us. Hi, Faye. Hi, honey. How are you? I am very well, thank you. How are you doing? I'm great. I want to hear this chance encounter with a tired bee created your business. Yes, it did. Yeah, so we launched Bee Vibe in 2019 um, and our whole business revolved around a product that we call, created called the Bee Revival Kit. And tell me what that does. Bee Revival Kit. So it... Uh, anyway, I've just got a little picture of a little bee needing <laughs> reviving. It's yeah, not that, is it? Yeah, exactly. So um, a product idea started because we were on holiday in Cornwall. I was with my partner and we came across a ground tired bee um, and we couldn't leave her. So we rolled up our sleeves and picked her up and we started our search for, for flowers, which unfortunately we couldn't find. Um, however, there was a cafe nearby who was super keen to help and we mixed some sugar and water up onto a spoon and after, after a little wiggle, a little warm wing warm up, she took off, said her thanks and we were like, wow, what an amazing experience to be able to help, um, you know, a bee. And so we, we looked to find the product that we could carry with us wherever we were so we could save a bee and, and it didn't exist so we made it. I um, just, this is like magic. This is like a magical story. So tell me, so literally what is it? So it's a key ring and inside the key ring, there is a tiny bottle which is full of sugar and water. Um, it's a specially designed syrup that mimics nectar. So you just put a couple of drops next to the bee and like you said in your photo, you can watch the bee lap it up. Um, she, he usually has a little wiggle, little warm up and then, and off she goes. and that feeling that we got, we wanted to share with other people. So, yeah. And why is it so important we save the bees? Oh, where do, where do I start? <laughs> I mean, bees are integral to, our, by, to biodiversity. They also pollinate one third of our food. So when I go to schools, I always talk to the children about, could you imagine not having strawberries or blueberries or avocados or your coffee in the morning? Yeah. That's, that's all thanks to our bees um, in, in a selfish way, but they do an amazing job of keeping our plants and foods and trees pollinated. So it's very important that we save every bee that we That's can. Amazing. And again, everyone listening, we're going to now talk about scaling because you've ast astronomically scaled your business. But the, the point here is, is that again, Faye has got, number one, the heart and soul of her business. There would be no business without Faye here. Number two, it is beyond 
you know, the purpose of your company is beyond your key ring that you're selling, right? It is actually to, it's a bigger, bigger societal issue. It's something now that, Faye, I will go away and I will maybe be at a dinner party and I will talk to someone saying, you'll never guess what, you know, you can now actually revive bees yourself. And, you know, it becomes a story that we can tell. So there's so many lessons in just what you've said, the purpose beyond the actual product, the storytelling nature, doing good, actually businesses doing good. Tell me about this scaling that's happened. So you started a beehive back at Bee Vibe back in 2019. When were the first signs that you knew that you needed to start scaling? Was it your ambition or was there just a influx of demand? Yeah, it's so interesting because we talk about the product being a solution. So it physically has, it can physically do something, but it also is a tool of empowerment. And it started off really as like a hobby. You know, we really wanted to do something great. I previously worked in fashion design. So this is a completely new thing I'd entered. Yeah. And it was on our kitchen table, grew very quickly to our spare room, sheds on the drive. And we were like, if we don't take this opportunity to grow it further, then less people are gonna know about how important bees are. So the reason it grew was really organically people would stop, save a bee, video it, tell their friends, their family, and then the message started spreading. And people were like, why should we save bees? And then we got to tell, you know, we got to talk about the education behind it. And so that's when we, we knew once we couldn't fit any more products in our house <laughs> and that we weren't <laughs> going to hire somebody to help us unless we moved. Um, so in 2021, we got our first studio and so we moved into that. And, and what was that like? So you got your first studio. I bet you there were deep breaths. There was, you know, you were worried. I mean, you, you know, I've spoken to many people. I spoke to this lovely uh, couple um, at actually Fern's Happy Place Festival and they were talking about making that leap. And they, they had to really invest. So they were going to remortgage and they were going to use that money to invest. It's a big moment, isn't it, when you decide? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, sca it's scary. Yeah. You're like, wow, well, I've never done this before. Like, is it the right? But now I look back and I'm like, it was a totally the right thing to do. It was definitely, like you said, it's an investment. It was investment on our business. It was investment in us, the people that we wanted to bring in to our team and the community. I didn't feel like we were going to be able to serve our community with the space that we had. Um, and yeah, now I look back and I'm like, you know, those fears. <laughs> I'm so glad they didn't stop me or stop us from yeah. that jump. Yeah, you, I, I think you instinctively, I think that, as I said, right at the beginning, entrepreneurs, we're not risk takers. We are, we do take risks though, but they're calculated. So yeah. the time that you get to that bit where you've got to make the decision, it's almost having faith that you have already thought about it too long, too yeah. much, and you're still with the idea. You're still making it work, which actually should give you faith. Tell me, um, what advice would you give the community when it comes to growing businesses? Because this climate at the moment, you know, would dampen, you know, even the brightest of spirits. Um, and as Simon said, it's actually, I mean, when you were just speaking, I, I, I wanted to say, invest in yourself because, it's a very personal journey. You know, yeah. we, we get to be very lucky to grow as human beings as we grow our businesses, don't we? So what would you say to those who might be feeling like they should be cautious right now? I think there's never a right time. <laughs> there's always something that could get in your way or something you might tell yourself to stop you from, from doing it. Uh, one thing I did that really helped is I reached out and joined networks of like-minded people that had experienced your challenges, were able to support you. And I were like, yeah, it, it is really hard, but look at what it could be. And like, let me hold your hand and let me celebrate your yeah. wins with you. And I definitely think that they're, def they're so underestimated, these spaces. And um, like in lockdown, you know, when you're on your own, you're sat there, it's locked down. And having like an online community like Dwen, which is what I, the first network I joined was yeah massive I yeah, I really recommend that to yeah. thinking about whether you're going to scale and there's never the right time 
there's never the right time. And I think you're right. It's about, you know, it's why us as an Instagram family, everyone who joins these lives, why we feel so connected, because we're talking to each other. We're asking the questions. And you talk about Dwen. It's one of the reasons, actually, genuinely, that we work with Dell, because yeah. they have an amazing uh, network uh, called Dwen. That's Dell's Women's Entrepreneur Network. And um, actually, today I launched, I think you were the winner, weren't you, in 2000 and. 21 um yes. because there is i mean i can't actually believe what they're giving away um, i posted about it today on my ig grid um basically there's a competition where you can win uh, three people can share a prize of forty thousand pounds worth of tech the top yes. prize is twenty five thousand pounds worth worth of technology um is that what you won it is i know yeah. it didn't oh my Gosh! It couldn't have come at a better time because we'd just made that decision to move into that studio. We'd moved in and then I won this amazing prize of technology. And not just the prize, but the journey that you go through when you enter the competition and, you know, how supportive Dell are. But now I have, yeah, an amazing setup, like the dream tech setup for my team. And it's really helped with our scaling of our business. So, yeah. yeah. Well, one of the things in scaling is technical, you know, technical ability and scalability. And I was just talking to, um, I know, you know, Dell help us so much. But there's also a thing which is like just on a personal level, you actually just call Dell's advisors, tech advisors. They basically help you build the tech solution for your companies. Yeah. Um, the, the competition that you won is, um, you can now enter, by the way, everyone. I posted it on my IG grid today. All head over there. You can all enter. Um, the competition, you need to enter by the 9th of October. Their first prize is £25,000 worth of tech. Second prize, £10,000 worth of tech. And the third prize is five grand's worth of tech. Now, I'm going to read out some comments because there's some beautiful comments coming through. Goodness, zero waste. Hi, B5. We are one of your stockists. What a lovely yes. surprise. Hello. Uh, Art by Oki, love my beehive, need to get my refill ordered. Bella and Phoenix, my kids adore theirs. They take them everywhere on their backpack, backpack and have saved many bees. I oh. love this idea. Popsy Clunk, it. what a fabulous idea. We're always trying to help bees. With these lives, I feel a massive sense of community. I agree, Popsy Clunk. Mimosa Beauty Salon, I saw this in Holly's desk notes this morning. It's on my Christmas list for lots of people. Wouldn't you love one? Love your story, Faye. We, save a bee, we saved a bee last summer in the garden. Your product is great uh, for on the go. Uh, Comla Fashion, oh, I love this so much. We keep bees, they are so important into all of our lives. So wonderful that customers are supporting this in great numbers. And yeah. Sparkles Eco Shop, it's so lovely to have a community to share ideas and brainstorm, offload, offload concerns over a cuppa. Talking of cuppa, I mean, I know this is a little bit rude, but Gloucester Pottery, I, this was my cup to commemorate my shop that I shut. But I was almost like, I'm not saying it was worth shutting my shop for my mug, but it's a pretty <laughs> great mug. Anna Fine Jewelry UK, really enjoying this chat. Um, I've got a question, Anna Fine Jewelry, I'm currently based in a craft center, but footfall is terrible. And 99% of my visitors have come especially to see me, thinking of moving my studio into my garden. But is this going backwards? Hmm. I, I would say, Hmm. Is it 19... a... What would you say, Faye? Is it a pivot? Yes. Is it, does it, does, we don't have to always move forward and backwards. We can move sideways and like that could help you flourish in another way. I love, what a great answer to that <laughs> question. Absolutely. I mean, I, I would say, is it a move sideways? If so, if it's more convenient to you and cost effective, then do it. If that footfall is a bit odd to come to your garden, then I would say mm, it might be odd. And if you would then not realise actually some of your footfall was from people finding you, you just didn't realise because you never asked, then you should ask the question. So maybe do a bit of a survey before you take the plunge. Tell yeah. me, um, what would you say in tips on scaling? What would be your top three tips to scaling, Faye? Oh, top three tips. 
growth doesn't always mean more people. It can mean developing and scaling your business in another way. Because I always think people always say, how many people are in your team? And it's like the more numbers, the more impressive it is. But actually, it's not true. And that can really hurt you as a small business. So number one is the mindset around what scaling. I always business. ask people that say that, what color is your underwear? Because <laughs> I, I, because I always feel like going, what's that got to do with absolutely anything? How many people I employ? I don't work in the city. I'm not some sort of, you know, more people, the bigger my company, the bigger my revenues. And I, I do a bit of waving this around. Um, no, no, no. So I totally agree. Growing a business, you could just have repeat customers, couldn't you? Who are repeating one more time. You don't need any more human beings necessarily for that in your team. Yeah, absolutely. Having a committed committed community group and that you know you have people around that truly believe in your mission i guess as well like number tip number two is to i always have like our mission like hung up and then when i go to make a decision including growth i always look back and i say does what i'm the decision I'm about to make align with that so i always great find point all written down like reminder a great thing when you are scaling whatever your business might be. Um, and number three is like, believe in, believe in yourself. Say yes to, and say yes to more opportunities. It's one of the things I always say when I, did, I never thought I was gonna win that contest. No way, I did it in my lunch break. I thought, wouldn't it be absolutely great to win? And I did, imagine if I hadn't. And like, yes. it's worth it. So just say yes, grab and grab those opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. Don't regret things. And, and I, I would also just say, uh, um, scaling, I think that yourself and Simon as guests is about having that vision, that real vision that you as a founder, forget all your customers, that you as a founder are striving to get to, because you'll then just bring everyone along with you, right? That's a really important one. Yeah, and it's funny because when you were reading out those comments that people had made, my heart was just going because that's exactly what I want people to say about mm. Vive. Like, yeah. I couldn't ask for better like comments because that's what I wanted. You know, children engaging, parents engaging, people gifting it to one another, spreading the love about bees and yeah, so. Yeah, oh my goodness. You're going to go down and be heaven, aren't you? That's... <laughs> They're going to like have this whole thing about faith. A lot. And I literally love it. Like, oh, I, love it. <laughs> I love this. A few more comments before you go. Green Dreamer UK needed to hear this today. I so believe in my business, which is a business for good. I'm holding myself back, though, through lack of investment. This has inspired me. Go out and get that investment. Liz 9438, amazing conversation. Thank you. Susie Lake Design, sometimes scaling is teaching what you know rather than adding more products. I love teaching my skills yeah. to others. Uh, Unseenians unseen icons we are trying to scale against very tough trading conditions but i'm choosing to take calculated risks and i've taken on a bigger premises you know all that positivity that's another thing driving into these great decisions it will pay off but you've got to be blinkered in your approach you've got to be dedicated and go for it um and sparkles eco shop thanks so much for these tips Faye. much appreciated Faye. thank you so much the bees thank you the community thank you um and it's so great that our last year's winner for this Dell competition has come on. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to make sure that everyone heads over there and maybe becomes a winner like you. Go for it. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, brilliant. Congratulations on everything you're building. Lots of love. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh my goodness. That's lovely Faye from B Vibe. Go and check out her site and go and save some bees. Now, one of the things I want you all now to do is head over to my IG grid. Um, go and follow the links to enter Dwen's Dream UK Tech Contest now. They are giving away a staggering 40Ks worth of tech. First prize is £25,000 worth of technology. It closes on the 9th of October, um, but you've got to be in it to win it. And 100%, 100%, it could be one of you. Every single one of you 
could win. So what? just go and do what you need to go and do. Get that cup of tea, go for a loo break, head over, fill in the form, and that's all you've got to do. Don't have to think about it again, but then you might be called on that day um, and told that your business lives are going to change. I've really enjoyed, my goodness, this chat with Simon and Faye. Um, it's we're not restored. I don't need it restoring. It just does it to me every single day. This is why I do what I do, because there are people like this on their journeys, relatively young in their journeys, um, and think about where they will be in 10 years time. Um, do go over, head over, follow them, like them, uh, share this IGTV with as many people as you know, um, and I will see you all very, very soon. I'm back to go and do my Halloween shoot. I'm very excited. This is my happiest place. Um, and oh yes, tomorrow you need to all come and join me um, over um, because I have got a live where I'm going to be taking everyone through my Halloween small business goodies. That's not going to be the title that I put on it, but it's going to be a goodie at 12 o'clock tomorrow. And do remember always to head over to our business advice on holly.co. Um, and again, thanks to Dell. Um, you can find advice um, articles on scaling, on pricing, on hiring. Um, and all of these are written by me with love to you um, to help you on your journey. Lots of love.